Hello. Thank you all for taking the time to um, join us today for the webinar. I'm going to first um, show you a brief PowerPoint. Um, survey Analytics started in 2002 in Seattle. We specialize in online mobile surveys, panel, conjoint analysis, crowdsourcing, sample, gamification, and more. So one of our first slides is going to um, show you our um, preview for SurveySwipe. SurveySwipe is a real-time feedback tool. It um, allows you to do mobile surveys, mobile panels. It um, allows you to push surveys in real time using um, geolocation. We have Survey Pocket. Um, this allows you to do surveys anytime, anywhere, online or offline. It is, again, integrated with our Survey Analytics platform. I like to think that Survey Analytics is the best backbone for all of our mobile applications. We're also introducing Life Metrics. Life Metrics gives you an unprecedented vision into your consumer's daily lives. It collects moment-by-moment -moment data from their mobile devices. And then we have our second prism application, which allows you to look at the data that you've collected on the go. You can share this with your internal team or external team. It's an app that you simply download to your um, smartphone um, or iPad um, to enable yourself to have a quick view. So, and now on to the demonstration. Okay. So I um, have logged into my Survey Analytics account. Um, survey Analytics online software is designed to meet the needs of the most complex online market research projects. Um, we do try to keep the software very simple yet robust. Um, we offer a variety of features. And I'm going to try to give you a high-level overview of those features today. When you log in, you're always going to be presented with a survey page. This is where you'll set up your surveys. You can add folders for each of your surveys. A lot of clients like to use this to set up folders for each of their individual clients. It makes organization much easier. You can also set up global surveys. Global surveys are surveys that you can share with other um, members of your team that have a survey analytics account. I do want to mention that we offer a video tour over here on the right side. So if you click on that, it does bring up a little video for you to watch that will also give you an overview of the software. So when setting up a new survey, <coughs> excuse me, you can choose to create a new survey tab. You're going to have three options here. You can copy a survey template. These are surveys that we already have set up. It makes for very easy deployment. You can go in and change those surveys to be more specific to you or your client's needs. You can create a survey from scratch. This is where you're going to go in and manually add all of the information needed for your survey. Or we do offer the convenience of importing a Word document. When importing a Word document, you will be required to format in a specific way. You can find that information for the formatting from your account manager or by clicking on these handy little question marks in a bubble, which will always bring up our help menu to assist you. So if I click on that, it's automatically going to launch our help page. The help page will have some basic information on how to do the import. It's also going to show you some screenshots to make things a little easier. And then if we keep scrolling down, you'll see that sometimes there are comments or helpful information put in by other clients or teammates. And some of our help files even have videos with them where you can click on the video and then one of our account managers um, will walk you through the process in video format. Okay, so once you've decided which option best suits your needs, you can click the Continue button. This is now the wizard is going to walk you through all the requirements to set up the survey. So you'll need to determine your survey name. You can determine what folder you would like this survey to be set in. And don't get too hung up on the folder. We can always move the survey later. Okay, so when we choose next, it'll move us to the layout options. The layout is going to be the um, theme of the survey that we send out to our clients. So if I flip through, you'll see that there are a few options here. You will also have the ability to customize that layout later when we get into the edit survey. 
Now, if I want to set my social media now, I can choose next, or I can hit the Finish tab, which is going to go ahead and launch the survey and allow me to start editing it. We'll go ahead and choose next. This is where I can enable the Connect with Facebook. So if I choose to allow my participants to um, connect with their Facebook directly from the survey, I can toggle the box. And then when I hit Finish, it's automatically going to create that survey for me. You want to click back to the survey tab for one minute just to show you. Because I left this survey in my webinar um, folder, it's now presented there. Now, I do have the ability, if I move over to Options, to move that survey, rename it, or copy it. Um, copy is, a, I think, a great option. What it allows you to do is take an existing survey, copy it so that you're not starting from scratch. So if you have a similar project coming up, why not take advantage of what we already have set up? You also have the ability to delete the survey as well. All right. So I've set up a webinar survey here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it's going to move us over to the Edit Survey tab. The Edit Survey tab is where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Um, you're going to set your survey up here, add your questions, um, do all of the logic that you need. So you'll be very familiar with this tab once you start using it. This is our survey link. You do have the ability to customize the link. So if I click on Customize, I can now add a description to my survey. So I want mine to say webinar, surveyanalytics.com. So I can check and save. And you can see that's now updated. These are the social networks that we're integrated with. So you have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the usual suspects are there. You'll see a few more options here at the top. We can add our own header and logo to the survey. So I've added in our survey analytics logo. You can also put in header information here. You can store the images here in survey analytics, or you can upload them from an external file. Okay. So if I choose Save Changes, it's going to update the look and feel of my survey. Again, we do have the opportunity to update this theme. You'll see that I originally went with this red capital option. But maybe I think the red is a little too harsh or my false thing to this. So I go down and choose ocean. So it's a more subdued gray and blue. And when I choose save the changes, my screen's going to refresh and the, the new look and feel is going to be there presented. You have the ability to view all questions at one time, five questions per page. So there's options here on what you see on the page and how you see it, whatever works best for you. I don't think it, it's I think everyone's a little different there. You have more options. You can print the survey. You can download it to Microsoft Word or Adobe PDF or into HTML. We also have a usability review as well. Um, this is generally going to be done by your account manager. Um, and if you're really interested in the usability review, please feel free to send um, a message or reach out to us. We'd love to discuss that with you in more detail. So the first part here, I have set up a, a little introduction to my survey. And if I wanted to edit that, maybe I get feedback from clients that they don't like the format or the text that I use. I can easily edit anything by choosing the edit. Then my display text comes up. I can go in and quickly make changes here. Um, you can force the participants to agree to a terms and acceptance checkbox. Or you can remove that. It's completely up to you and what you um, require. We're going to have a few other options here in the edit. We're going to have settings. So you'll have the default, the text types. So you can do default, heading, subheading, and again, the checkbox for agree is there as an option. You'll have display settings. This allows you to put in a YouTube video. So if you wanted the participants to view maybe a speech by your president, your company president, you can um, embed that here. You can also add instructions and headers for the participants to use. And then under tips, you can give tips um, that will help the, um, the participants with the question. Or add in more help text. 
You're going to have the ability to add or update your logic for your questions by simply toggling the Add Update Logic button. Again, the Setup Logic Wizard is going to pop up, um, and the type of logic that's available for that question type will be presented. So the current logic for this is branching and skip logic, the compound delayed branching, and show hide question logic. And then under More, you'll see that you can, again, alter the settings. You can change the analytics, display options. You can copy this specific question. So if you want to copy it and then move it down the survey and add a similar question type, it just makes the work a little, it's a little less laborious to do it that way. You can reorder the questions or you can preview that specific question and how it's going to appear to your participants. So this is exactly how the participants would see this question when they open the survey. Our header is in place exactly as um, I added it. And then I can check the text to make sure it meets my client's needs. Okay. So let's get into adding our questions. We have a little wizard in place. So when you click on Add New Question, you're going to be presented with our question types. We do offer over 50 question types. Um, and they're broken out into different sets. So we have our standard question types. This is going to be our multiple choice, our open in text, matrix tables. So the very basic question types that we're all accustomed to using on a regular basis. If you're not sure how a, a question is going to present to your participants, you can click on that question. And it's going to show you an example of what that will look like to them. So here we see our multi-point scale question. And then we do have like date and time, contact information, and all of these are editable. So if maybe you want the contact information, but you really don't need all of this information, if you're not married to that layout, you will have the ability to edit it and remove the fields that aren't going to be important to you. If we move down to advanced question types. We're going to see the first question type that comes up. It's going to be our side-by-side -side matrix. It also gives us the ability to add some logic. So we can add a randomizer, randomizing the questions that are presented to the participants. We can do reference validated data or dynamic lookup tables. We also have this ability to allow our participants to attach or upload a file. This has um, been a, a great tool for our clients who are um, using our mobile surveys. It allows them to have participants take a photo or maybe a video clip of what they're doing and then load that back in for review later. Um, it, it's worked really well and it's been an exciting addition. We also offer, offer net promoter score. So we'll move on down to our add-on modules. Add-on modules is where you're going to find your conjoint. Here's an example of the conjoint max step question type. We also offer conjoint discrete choice. Now it'll take a second to render there. And our conjoint is quite popular with um, the majority of our clients and, and it's actually been a huge draw for new clients. So here you can see this conjoint discrete choice. You do have the ability to add images to your conjoint questions as well. So rather than just putting the text on there, you can actually show them images of the product. I always think images really draw clients in and make them feel more engaged than being forced to read an overabundance of text. Again, as far as images go, we do offer image chooser question types that allow you to put your images in, and this you can see is for credit cards. Um, again, so the text is there with the image. And then I'm going to move down, and I did want to share with you a couple of the mobile question types we've added. We did add in the smiley question types. People seem to really like um, the images of thumbs up or smiley faces um, have always gone over well with participants. And then you'll see that we do have other complex grid flex matrix question types. And then there's some integration with our micro panel, which is our integrated panel management tool. And another um, tool that I think is a great resource is our library. This allows you to save questions 
or surveys and then use them in other questions and surveys. So we're not constantly recreating the wheel. We're able to go back and just pull the relevant questions out and move them over to the survey that we're currently working on. Again, I'm pretty lazy, I hate to say that, but I like to use things, the resources I have available, and I think most people do as well. So again, you would pick the survey you want to pull from, the questions would come up, and you can basically pull those questions over, quickly edit them, and add them to your existing survey. Okay. Again, with any of the questions, you can go in and edit them. So if I wanted to go in and change this question text or add in the mailing address, I can do that. And then once I choose Save Question, it's automatically going to update, and those changes are going to be visible to me right here in the software. Okay. Oh, here's another exciting question type I forgot to mention was the stars. Um, it allows your client to set a star rating for your product's website or any other things that you think that that would be a good fit for. Okay, so once I have my survey completely set up, I want to preview that survey and make sure that it makes sense going through, that there's um, no errors or issues. So in this top right corner, I'm going to hit the preview button. And again, I, I see my welcome screen that gives our basic instructions for this survey. When I choose continue, I'm then going to be presented with the rest of my questions. So my contact information question is going to show first. And I did not separate these into separate pages. You um, do have the ability to do that. I just um, kept all of my questions on one page for this. So then they can go through and answer the questions. You want to make sure all of your logic is working properly prior to sending your survey out. And when I choose continue, I put in this thank you for completing the survey page. Um, you do have options on how the survey completion page looks. Um, you can do an automatic redirect to your website. And all of that can be done right here in our finish options. So on the left, we're going to see our menu um, that allows us to update or make changes to our survey. So if I click on this finish option, I'm going to have the ability to determine what my participants see when completing the survey. So at this point, I haven't set to none. I can set up a thank you page with a link. We can do that automatic redirect. If we want to send them back to our website, to a client's website, maybe I want to redirect them to my micro panel um, site where they can join my panel group. You can allow them to forward this to a friend. You can add a spotlight report. This allows the respondents to compare their overall results. So it basically gives them a summary of how other people have um, responded to that survey, which a lot of people like. Again, they feel more involved when they're able to see the results. So I'm going to pop back up under Edit Survey. And we do offer display options here. Again, we're going to give you the ability to customize your theme. You can change your font type, which is definitely something people like to do. Um, I know some companies I've worked at are married to a specific font and will require to use it with all documents. So you do have some flexibility here. You can edit the font size. So maybe your client wants it to be in a much larger font because they're going to be targeting an older client base. You can edit that. You can edit the navigation buttons and toolbars. So rather than saying continue, you would like to say next, then you can edit that here. You can enable an exit survey button and enable a back button. So if you want the participants to be able to go to the previous um, question and change their response, you can allow them to do that here. And again, our social network toolbar here. If you toggle this, it's going to enable that social network toolbar at the bottom of your survey. Our um, software is multilingual, so if you wanted to have the survey available in five different languages, you would have the ability to add and edit the language versions here. You could then go in and choose the language of choice. It does not auto-translate. Let me go ahead and save that, the survey. Um, it just allows you to change the survey default language, so that if I did have it translated into Arabic, it would present that way for the participants. You can add a validation message. So if you wanted to make a question um, mandatory, then you would add the validation to that. They would then see a message saying, 
all questions marked with the asterisk are required. Interactive survey tools allows the um, survey to move to the next page without someone hitting the continue button. So it allows the survey to move much more smoothly and quickly. Global options allows you to do a change to the overall survey at one time rather than going through and doing the edit. You can also check your logic here and verify that everything's working properly. Under survey control, we're going to offer our security options. We do have survey authentication. What this allows you to do is set a global password protect or an email password, um, which is very popular when doing internal surveys with corporate. They want to make sure that it's the proper person answering. So maybe they set a username and password or a participant ID. Um, you have the ability to quickly and easily do that here. We do offer SSL security. Again, if you're not sure what SSL security is or any of the other options, go ahead and click on the help file. Again, the help file is going to give you great information. Um, if you need additional information, again, you can reach out to your account manager. So you can see here that the SSL security um, is checked. The links of the surveys are automatically encoded. Um, the industry standard encryption technology is in place. So that's another layer of security to your, the data that you're collecting. You can set unique respond enabling or disabling. This is going to prevent ballot box stuffing. So you simply toggle the box, and that is now set in place. Save and Continue has been quite popular with um, our clients that are using longer surveys. It allows them to save the survey where they're at. They then get an email with a link that actually opens exactly where they left off and allows them to complete the survey. We offer quota control. So if you want to set um, a close date or response quota, you'll have the ability to do that here. And we also offer a count time timer. So if you only want participants to have three minutes to reply to a survey, you'll have the ability to set that as well. Again, we already took a look at our finish option. We have email notification. Enable a thank you email allows you to send an email to the participant thanking them for their participation. And then we have these action alerts, which, which I find um, quite desirable. Um, action alerts allow you to be made aware when a client answers a question Maybe it's a customer satisfaction survey, and I want to know if they answer in a very negative way. I want to be made aware today, not in three days when the survey closes, but now so that I can act on that, and they can know that we take their response seriously. I can set an action alert here that will alert me of any negative response that comes through. So we find that to be a really helpful tool. Under survey options, you're going to see your images in multimedia. Um, as I stated, you can save your images here in Survey Analytics and use them, or you can upload them from an external file. But as you can see here, I've put in images of products that I've used in a conjoint survey, and then I can just pull them directly from here. Okay. We do offer Salesforce integration. So if you're currently a Salesforce client and you want your survey data to be um, directly connected to your Salesforce account, you can do that here. You just simply use your username, password, and security token. And last but not least is our rapid feedback option. Global rapid feedback code is presented here. Basically, that's going to be your QR code. It allows you to set up um, a custom feedback code um, and then export them and use them out in the field. Again, that's been really popular with our Survey Pocket application that allows offline and online um, surveys and also our Survey Swipe mobile application. Okay. Let's pop on over to the options when we're sending our survey out. Okay, Survey Link. Again, it's the survey link that I've set in place. I can toggle any of the social network options here. It's then going to redirect to my Facebook account. I can then share this link um, with my Facebook users. So if I wanted to share this link with my friends and I, I wanted their feedback, then I would have the ability to do that. Um, this has been popular with some of our corporate clients that have a Facebook page and want to engage their um, consumers on there. We do um, 
send email invitations out directly from the survey analytics software. If I click on send email invitation, I can upload addresses from here. I can um, set the subject and also make this message specific to my client. You can set a website intercept. This is going to allow you to set a pop-up on your website um, where the participant maybe they log into or move to a specific page. That survey pops up and they're able to participate. Um, you can quickly and easily add these in using these HTML codes. And you can see that we do offer a few options here. We do have the feedback tab. We have the webinar survey, which would just appear the survey, or a simple website pop-up. Okay. Here's where you can create new survey invitations. You can make these invitations very specific to that product or to that client base, and those will be stored here for future use. You will also have the ability to manage your email list within survey analytics. So if you wanted to set up multiple email lists um, for specific clients or maybe you wanted, you have a segmentation broken out by age, gender, and you wanted that list stored here to use for your survey moving forward, you can do that. So when creating the new email list, you will enter the name of the email list. And then when I click on these advanced options, it's going to allow me to code list, and then choose the type. So if I want it to be a global list, which is available to all of my surveys, or only available to this specific survey, you'll have that choice here as well. You can do a mass upload from a CSV or Excel file. So we're not expecting you to type each um, email address in individually. On sent items, you're going to have the ability to track the surveys that you've sent out. So here I see my batch ID. I see the timestamp for the survey. I see what email group this survey was sent to. And then I can see that initially I sent out three. And when I click on this, I can actually see who the survey was sent to. So it provides their email address, their current status as far as if they've taken the survey or not, not the timestamp of when they participated, and then their respondent ID. And you'll see that we have an area here for custom fields. Custom fields are fields that I could have put in on the front end that provide more details about these participants. Um, and those are going to be visible here as well. And we can then later use them in our reporting functionality. Again, the website intercept we already looked at, but that is where it's going to give you the exact HTML codes. All of these surveys can also be deployed directly to our mobile application. Let me move this out of the way. I do have my simulator up so that you can see Survey Pocket. Again, is our application that is used on iPads. Um, also, can be used on iPhones, Androids. It allows you to do surveys online and offline. It's very popular with um, people at conferences um, or if they're going to be out in public where there's spotty Wi-Fi. It's going to allow them to do that. Um, collection without having to do any data entry, which is huge. Um, and then Survey Swipe is our mobile application where you have people join your panel, and then you are able to push surveys out to them using um, geolocation tracking or just scheduling surveys and pushing them out to participants. And that's loading right now. And let me go ahead and make that a little larger so everyone can see it. On the survey swipe tool, you'll have the ability to put your logo in so that your clients know when they open it that the surveys are from you directly. I'm going to show the available surveys, and I've shown the completed surveys here, but all of this is customizable. Um, you can allow them to see or update their profile here in the bottom tab. So you can see their information or have them add additional information as they're going along. You can set up communities within your panel. These communities can be private or public. And then I set the rewards page so that I can incentivize the participants of my surveys. What this allows them to do is see where they are point-wise and what number of points they need to actually cash in for an incentive. Again, all of this is customizable. Um, I can remove these tabs or add other tabs in. But again, an exciting way that people are sending surveys out and, and getting 
their clients more engaged. And it looks like my simulator is a bit dead on survey pocket. I apologize for that. But let's go ahead and pop right back into survey analytics. And we'll take a look at the report tab. Okay, so when the report tab comes up, we're going to quickly see the report link, which I do have the ability to share um, internally or externally with um, interested parties. I can see how many people viewed my survey, started and completed it. And then down under, you will see a quick view of how people responded to the questions. And again, if I wanted to share one specific question over another, I can share this link, which will directly be related to that question. We can also go over to reports and you can see our real-time summary. Real-time summary is going to allow you, again, to view the information. So now this has been viewed by nine people, started by eight, and completed by six. So as we've been in this webinar, people have actually logged into this survey and completed it. And it does update in real time, so you're able to track this throughout the day or throughout the week if that's how long your survey is running. It gives me my completion rate of 75%. I had two dropouts after starting, and the average time to complete this survey was 50 seconds. So when I scroll down, I can actually see how often do you use our products. Um, three people said always. And if I click on that three, it's actually going to bring me to our response viewer down here under data management, where I'm able to see which respondents actually said yes. So it shows me the respondent ID, the IP address, their date and timestamp, also the respondent email, country code and region. So if I click on their respondent ID, I'm going to get a little more drill down. It's actually going to bring up the information specific to that one participant. So again, all those response details. The integration tags are custom variables that I could have put in on the front end, it's going to show me their geocoding, and then their actual information on how they responded to the survey. So this is for Bob Smith. And it actually lets me view exactly how he answered all of the questions. Okay. I can pop back to my real-time survey. And from here, I'm also, if I click on the 60%, it actually tells me the margin of error. And then under, you're going to see that it offers the mean, confidence interval, standard deviation, and standard area error for this specific question. So as I scroll down, I can also see my website information. And then if I click on the, I'm going to call it a call, I'm not sure what the actual term is, but for this little do that over here in the right corner, it's going to allow me to see the custom analysis options. So I can do some custom scales. I can download this data for this question to Excel. I can download trend data if it's available. I can create a banner table or call segment directly from this area, or I can add this to a dashboard. Dashboard accounts are accounts that we set up for the clients to view the data but not be able to make any changes to the survey directly. Um, they're really quite popular for our clients um, who have external clients who want to view the data, see it in real time as it's being collected, but they don't want that client to be able to make any changes that are going to stick or be a hindrance to the actual survey. So it allows them to go in and set their own call tab, do their own um, back-end reporting without affecting anything that the analyst is doing. Okay. You can filter the results. So we can filter by started but not completed, completed, and then terminated via branching. We have a few more options up here as well. You have the ability to download. <clears throat> Excuse me again, I'm sorry. You have the ability to print or email. You can share the link. And then you'll see that there's the option for permalink and then for individual responses as well. Let's go ahead and move down to our participant statistics. Okay. 
So this is going to give us a view of our overall participant statistics. Again, the viewed started and completed. If you click on these, again, it's going to give you that um, response viewer information. We can see our completion rate and the dropouts. So current email delivery status, 100% of them were delivered. I did not set to send out reminders, but you can do that. And then you can see any grouping and segmentation participant statistics, which I have not set up yet. Our open in text will be viewed here under open in text. And again, you'll be able to see the date, the respondent ID, and the actual text that they put in place. You do have the ability to export the data from survey analytics in a variety of ways. You can export the raw data to Microsoft Excel or CSV. You do have options whether to include the open in text and the raw data. And then under the report options, you can include the analytics and statistical calculations or remove the statistical calculations based on your needs. You can display your answer values and question codes instead of text. And then you have some filters here. So if you wanted to filter based on um, the period of time, maybe we only want the last two days, not the entire 10 days, you can filter that here and run a report that suits your needs. You can export the charts and analytics. That's going to be our real-time summary. Um, that can be exported to PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. And you do have options as far as the template that you want to use. We have our survey analytics blue, which is always the default. Or you can come down and choose one of the other Microsoft options that best suits your needs. And again, you're going to have that time and response filter here as well. Some of our newer options are the ability to export to a cloud, so to Google Documents or to Dropbox. We also offer you the ability to export that package to SPSS or to a SQL import data file. We do offer online tools. So you'll have the ability to create your cross tabulation reports right here in Survey Analytics. You can also work with your banner pivot tables here as well, um, which has been a great tool for me in the past. And um, I really think there's a huge balance value in both these types of tools. Customized reports, um, generally our account managers would assist you with this, but it allows you to customize your report to gain the information that you need. We also offer Word Clouds, um, which has been quite popular as well, and we're a great addition to the software. Word Cloud is going to take your open end data and quickly put it into a um, visual that you can share. And as you can see, this one is just first name. Let's pop on down to our advanced analysis. We have for data segmentation. So you're going to be able to set a, set a data filter. You can choose the segmentation type. So you would name it and then determine, do I want to see my responses to the survey? Those custom variables that I put in on the front end, maybe that's um, demographic information that I want to use to segment on the back end. Or you can use time-based criteria as well. Once your segment's in place, you just choose report options. And you can see the summary report or a text report. We also offer trend analysis, which I think is another great tool. What this allows you to do is if you have a continuous running survey, you can measure the trends in the data over time. Um, trend analysis is basically calculating and comparing results of the survey. Um, I know a lot of clients I used to work with did month-to-month -month trackers. This was a great tool for them. So down here we have our data management options. This gives you the ability to search within the um, collected data and to choose a random winner, which again works really well with Survey Pocket. Um, we use it at conferences ourselves when giving away um, iPads. We would use the random winner so that it was um, the systems rolling. There was no human error involved or nepotism. The response viewer um, is where we were directed before when we like our drill down. So we're back here again. Um, this again is going to provide with for you the respondent ID, and all other relevant information to the people that participated. You do have the ability to delete selected responses. Just be sure once you do it, you meant to do it or you just lose it. Another great option is the report or data scheduler. What this allows you to do is schedule reports to run 
so that you're not constantly coming in and having to manually run them yourself. You can also share these reports. So you would name the report, determine which report you want to be run. Maybe you want to get a daily update of the um, wall data and analytics. So you would set that up. It can be done daily or weekly. You can set the day. The time is already set. Um, that's our standard. It's not able to be changed. But again, you can choose the data window that you want to see. You can add um, additional filters and then choose what delivery mode you want the, the report to be sent in. So let's go ahead and move over to our mobile tab. This is where you will set up all of your survey pockets of vice registration. It's going to provide your username and password for your survey pocket application. Again, you can determine what folder the um, iPad is able to access so that not all surveys are available, only the ones that are going to be needed. Over here, we also have our second PRISM app registration. And also where you would set up your location surveys for survey swipe. So if you are setting up geolocation-based surveys, you would come here to put those locations in place. Okay, so moving along to our integration tab. Again, we're going to see our website intercept options here. We want to give you multiple places to pull that data. And then I'm going to go ahead and move down to web analytics. This is where you can use your Google Analytics account, integrate it with our survey analytics platform. We also offer Omniture site catalyst integration. And it's so simple. You simply toggle the enable Google Analytics option and put your account information in. I don't think it can be much simpler than that. Import data is going to give you the ability to import external data into your survey. We do offer translation service to a partner of ours. So if you did want to get a survey translated, we could um, put you in contact with them and they could assist you with that process and then load that um, translated um, version back into our software. Under sample management, you're going to see the ability to do quota control. So custom quota configurations available here. And then down below, we're going to offer our API data flow. So if you are interested in API connectivity, Survey Analytics does offer that type of integration. So let's pop on over to our analytics tab. I see that I'm a little long-winded. I'm going a bit longer than I meant to. I apologize. Again, under analytics, you're going to see the ability to set up your banner, banner pivot tables. We do offer <clears throat> weighting and balancing. Um, I'm not seeing as many customers use this as I used to, but we know that it's still important to some people to be able to go in and set up a specific weight um, for the response. And you have the ability to quickly and easily do that here. Data Visualizer, again, is going to give you the summary um, that you see on our reports page as well. You can export reports. And then I want to make sure and show you the choice modeling for our conjoint analysis. Um, you're going to note that that's not under the report tab. Anytime we want to look at the conjoint, we have to move to the analytics tab. I do not have um, a discrete choice conjoint question in place, so there's nothing there. But I do have a max diff question in place. So let's take a look at that reporting. So here we're going to see a visual of how people responded to that question. It looks like MasterCard is going to be the champion. And then when I scroll down, I can actually do a comparison. It looks like 20% of people preferred Visa, or 40% of people said that was their least likely. MasterCard was our overall winner for positive, and American Express our overall loser for negative. You do have the ability to export this report. So if you wanted to share this information, you would have the ability to do so. Under text analytics, this is a new tool for us. Um, so it is something that we're currently working to um, add to the software. It's a really exciting um, area that I myself have um, worked with a lot in the past. And as that is um, coming about, we'll definitely send information out to interested parties and keep you updated. But it basically does machine clustering to allow you to look at certain um, areas of interest without having to go through and read each individual response. We also offer tag clouds. Um, they're similar to our word clouds, but 
the tag plot actually allows you to put in stop words, which I think makes a huge difference in the visual. Um, we're able to take out the words that have no significance to us and really get to the meat of what we want to know about the responses. So up here, you just easily um, put in your tag, your stop words. I've only put in a few, but as we all know, this could be hundreds of stop words in here. And then you also have the ability to download the tag clouds as well. And last but not least, I do want to um, move on to our panel option. Um, Survey Analytics does offer an integrated micro panel solution. So if you're interested in developing your own panel or moving to a panel that is integrated with your software, your survey software, this is, I think, a great option. Um, it's very easy to use. In the past, um, my colleague John Johnson has put on some webinars and they are still available and we can share them with you of how to set a panel up in 30 minutes, which in the past was completely unheard of. It's a very quick, easy tool to use. And again, our account managers are always there to assist in any way um, when you're building a panel or working to grow that panel. Um, so you simply create a new panel. Um, and again, a wizard's gonna pop up. We always have this in place to assist you with making this a painless process for you. Once you name the panel, put in your heading and URL, you are able to then go in and quickly set up that website, that recruitment page, and, and add all of the things that are of interest to you. And I do want to mention that um, we have added a couple of options here, which I think are fantastic. We've added the diary option, which is going to allow your participants to journal, um, which has been a big demand from some of our clients to actually have products used by clients for a week, and they want a daily update on how that person's doing. Um, we also offer community questions or discussion boards to really get that group working together and, and learning more about what they're doing um, and, and their thoughts and feelings. Okay. So that is a very high-level overview of the software. Again, I could have went into a great amount of detail in each area. But we do only have an hour. So I'm going to pop back up and say, do we have any questions? Thanks, Nicole. Um, yes, we do have some questions. Um, if others have questions, you can submit them in the questions module in your uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, the first question is, um, can you customize the URL fully to a custom domain? <sighs> That there is, we have, there are special pricing. It is something that we're not um, completely against. Um, whoever asked that question, I would ask that you contact us directly and let's have a one on one conversation regarding your needs. Okay. Um, the next question is Is the version that uh, that that you are demoing the current version in Question Pro, and I think I'm glad someone asked this question because sometimes uh, people uh, don't understand the distinction between Survey Analytics and our sister company, which is Question Pro. Yeah, and and the thing is, the softwares do look quite similar, um, but it is not the same. Um, we do offer functionality and capabilities that are not going to be aware or I'm sorry, not going to be offered in Question Pro. Um, we offer an enterprise software that allows you to do the micro panel integration, all of the mobile, conjoint, and many other features that, that aren't um, currently available, API connectivity. Um, so if they're using Question Pro but looking for a, a more... Okay, I'll, I'll, let me reword that. If they're looking for more features that aren't currently available, um, I would love to have a discussion with them and, and really allow them to see the differences and the benefits of upgrading. Okay, next question. You showed a net promoter score question on a five-point scale. Can the traditional 11-point scale be used? Will the NPS reporting work they for the expanded scale? Yes, they have the ability to set the scale. Great. and um, so They can change it, yeah. Okay. And someone says, um, do you have the max list question type? I think they may have meant max diff. Yes, we do. OK. Um, can you export to SPSS? Yeah, that, yeah I showed that um, to the same file. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, can you Sorry if I went quickly. And... 
I apologize. I think they may have asked it before you showed it. So. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Um, can you use the software for mobile survey surveys using QR codes without using panel participants? Okay. If they were to use a QR code without panel, it would actually just load the survey in their browser, and the survey would then be available there, but it would not actually be survey swipe. Um, the survey would come up if they, they set, embed it into the QR scan it. The survey is going to come up in their browser. So on my phone, it would come up in my Safari. Um, I would then be able to participate and take the survey. And, and it does update to meet the resolution of your phone. So it's actually quite nice. Okay. And we have people that have done that. Okay, so yes, but it renders in the browser. You've got it. Okay. Um... I was hoping for more detail on how you implement max diff and conjoint. Um, what's it behind it in terms of generating the questions and analyzing the data? Okay, um, I'm going to say that I think again that's going to be a conversation that I've had in a separate meeting where we can really focus just on conjoint. We can also share some of our past webinars that are very specific to conjoint and how it's used in our software. Great. Um, what is your pricing model? Great question. <laughs> um, pricing is something very specific to each client and their needs. Um, we, I mean, we have a basic, but we like to do that on a one-on-one -on -one, um, because each client's needs are different. Therefore, the pricing is going to be different, scalable to meet their needs. Right, and, and just to, to underline, Nicole, one of the things that people ask us about with respect to pricing is uh, one of the, the things that we always say is that, that we have um, flat pricing, and that's something that distinguishes us. We have unlimited responses and unlimited surveys uh, for your price. Yes, yeah, definitely. Unlimited surveys, questions, and responses. Okay. Um, if I wanted to see more details about panel, are you going to do a webinar about that? We are. It's one of the things we um, actually talked about in our last meeting, and was one of the areas that we all agreed um, would be another great way to show the software. So, yes, in short. Okay. Can you wait entire data sets, not just per question? I believe it is per question. I'm almost positive. Um, is, are the questions going to be in the field data so we know who actually asked the questions? Yes. Okay, then I will respond directly to them. But I believe it's individual questions. If I, if it's Great. So the next question is... Uh... Welcome to GoToWebinar, web events made easy. Hello? Are you back? Yes, I'm back. I dropped off there for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I have the trial version, but the survey sent to but will the survey sent to participants carry uh, advert, I assume advertisement uh, from Survey Analytics other than powered by Survey Analytics? Um, once they move to the real a, a live account, it would just say powered by survey analytics. The other things that are currently they're seeing are because it's a trial account. Okay. Um, can it do turf analysis? Yes, we do offer turf analysis. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I analyze incomplete surveys on SurveyPocket? Can I clean the data of responses without deleting them entirely? You can clean the data responses without um, complete without deleting them in Survey Analytics, but uh, not from Survey Pocket. Okay. Um, some of my team was unable to attend today. How can they view a webinar similar to this? Um, Dana, we do share the recorded webinar with all of our the attendees. Correct. Yes, in fact, um, you can expect a, an email with a link to the recording of the webinar within 24 hours. And feel free to share that with your colleagues and friends. Do you offer sentiment analysis? That is something that's going to be part of our analytics. Um, so it is something that we're working to um, 
add to the software, but it is not currently available. Okay, and it looks like last question, good timing. Um, can images be bulk loaded and is there a limit on images? Um, there is a, a limit that's set and I'm not positive if they can be bulk loaded. I, I, I'm going to say no at this point. They're not. It's, I'm, it's not something I am able to do, but our account management team or development team could assist them with doing it. Great. I'm sure. Great. So I guess that's another individual follow-up. Yep. Yeah, and I, I'll make a note of that. Okay. I think that's the end of the questions. Thanks, everyone, and thank you so much, Nicole. Oh, thank you. Thank every, Thank you all, all for joining us today. It was um, a pleasure. I think we have a contact. And there's our superheroes. <laughs> yes. Yep, I'm, I'm flipping through. <laughs> and then, uh, yep. We want to help there. you be a hero. And then here's our uh, the contact information. You can get directly in touch with Nicole or just to our sales team generally. And um, and on behalf of Nicole and myself, uh, thank you very much. All right. Thanks, Dana. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.